Hello, hello. It's been a minute. Um, I'm going to run the intro real quick, and then we'll talk about where I've been and what my plans are, and we'll get into a few things today. Um, I just had to kind of jump in because it's been too long. So let's play the intro, and then we'll get started. Hi, I'm Nicole, and as you have probably guessed, I have ADHD. I live and breathe all things ADHD in my personal, family, and professional life. I have a background in psychology and special education, and I've gained a lot of knowledge over the years about ADHD, what it really is, how it touches every aspect of your life and the life of your child, as well as a wealth of information and strategies for living with ADHD and parenting kids with ADHD. In this community, we share stories, we learn together, and we support each other as we navigate all things ADHD. Welcome. I'm sure that YouTube is not showing this to many people, so I don't know how many of you are going to make it live, but hopefully you'll catch replay. And I'm just lighting my candle here. Let me get my work environment set. I know a few minutes late, but that's because ADHD, right? Um. So first things first, where the heck have I been? <laughs> I came out in January and said, we're starting strong and I've got all these plans. And, you know, I went through kind of some of my personal goals as well. Things I was going to get done, decluttering projects I was working on, and I got a good start. And then the last week of January started with another kidney stone. I've had kidney stones in the past. Um, this is one that we knew was there from a previous, um, scan after my last kidney stone, but weren't sure if it was going to hang out in the kidney or if it was going to make its way along. It'd been about a year and a half almost since my last kidney stone. Um, unfortunately for me, when I get a kidney stone, they tend to stick around even ones that are of a size that they should pass on their own they do not so um after eight weeks they finally went in to scope that and take it out so that happened uh towards the beginning of march um so for those eight weeks i was kind of on and off of painkillers some days it'd be okay and then other days i'd be completely out for the count I didn't think it was a great idea for me to get on a live stream. Um, <laughs> fuzzy brain. So those weeks I was kind of in my work and family just doing the bare minimum. Um, you know, the emergencies, the things that had to get done. So that meant once... Uh, after I had the surgery and then recovery was a lot harder this time. Last time I had it done, um, the next day I was driving four hours to my son's marching band competition and did that for a couple of days, drove back on a Sunday morning, was home for about 15 minutes long enough to grab a suitcase and head to the airport. I flew to Los Angeles because the marching band was going to Disneyland Walked around Disneyland for two days and then flew back and all of that with the stent and, you know, it was fine. It wasn't the most comfortable, but I was okay. This time, ooh, it was not okay. Let's just, I'll just leave with that. The recovery was much, much harder than I anticipated, much more pain than I had experienced before. Um, I was expecting to be able to recover a lot quicker and it took me longer than I expected. 
and then spent a couple of weeks trying to dig myself out of the whole of the backlog of my real job. Although, I don't know. My husband and I own a business. I run the business side of things and I work mostly from home. Well, it is definitely a job. It, I'm also still at home most of the time, so it feels weird, but, and yeah, anyway, that's a whole other topic. I'm not going to go down that tangent right now. Um, so I got myself dug out of that hole for a little bit and then took my kids on spring break last week, which was fantastic. We went to, we have some family in Southern California. So we went to the beach and we went to SeaWorld because my youngest is obsessed with all things sea creatures. So he was in heaven. It was Charlotte's, Charlotte, come here. Come. Come here. Come say hi. This is Charlotte. Charlotte is my eight-year-old son's service dog. She, We just passed her one-year anniversary of her coming to our home um, a few days ago. Hey. Come say hi. Oh, this is Charlotte. She's a stand poodle. And she, it was her first time of traveling with us. Good girl. Okay, please. Yes. Come here. Okay. Maybe she'll hang out back there so you can see her. There she is, pretty. It was her first time of traveling with us and really like being on the job for an extended period of time. And she was amazing. Um, she was fantastic at SeaWorld. She was great at the beach. She loved it. She helped so much with my son. Those big public spaces are definitely tricky. For us and um, she was just awesome. She did a phenomenal job. So I was, we weren't sure. She's been kind of a naughty phase. She's in that like just over a year phase <laughs> and she's a bit naughty at home right now. So I was slightly concerned we were going to have that problem, but she did great. So, and then she came home and was immediately naughty again, <laughs> but she helped so much for keeping my eight-year-old who, like I said, sea creatures are life for him. They are his very favorite thing. And normally in those sorts of places, it was really crowded with spring break. Normally in those kinds of places, he will be bolting in every direction very hard to keep him with us. Um, and that was not a problem this time. And it was so wonderful. And the people were great at SeaWorld about helping us out with her. They have little kennels at some of the rides so that we can still ride the rides. Um, and she just sat in a little kennel at the exit of the ride awaited for us. It was awesome. Um, and we had a great time visiting family and spending some time together after mom kind of being out of commission for a couple of months. I'm feeling a little bit like uh, in The Princess Bride. <laughs> it's like, we just sucked two years of your life away. I feel like two months of my life were sucked away into kidney stone land. Um, and so now I'm still kind of getting caught up. I've been meaning to put out, I have ideas and actually some things recorded to put out for some shorts. Um, I just haven't gotten, it, gotten them edited and posted yet. Uh, hoping to do that very soon. It's just been, it's been a tough, been a tough year couple of months start to the year I was you know halfway through decluttering projects when I went down um and then you know I've talked before about how I have some autoimmune conditions I've been working with a functional medicine doctor to get those under control but about seven weeks into eight weeks of kidney stones I just got tired of 
eliminating a lot of foods that I just wanted to eat what tasted good and I didn't want to worry about it. I was already flaring from being on painkillers and from having a kidney stone. And so, yeah, I would say I fell off the wagon and I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting back on because then we went out of town. Traveling always makes things like that harder. So I'm working on getting on an autoimmune reset, drinking lots of water and getting all of that back under control. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the story of where the heck did Nicole go? Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be back. I'm hoping you all find me again <laughs> and I'm hoping to be back more frequently and more consistently as I get all of the rest of get, you know, unburied from being out of commission for two months. Uh, unfortunately, th the best laid plans that I have are often derailed and health is just one of those things that you can't control. I'm hoping that was the last of the kidney stones. We will, um, I have some more imaging coming up to check, but believe that the kidney stones that I have had in the last couple of years were caused by a medication that I was on for a little while. I'm no longer on that medication, and this kidney stone that we knew was there uh, did not grow very much over the year in between when we identified that it was there and it decided to make its way out of the kidney and get itself significantly stuck. <laughs> um, so fingers crossed that this is now uh, something behind find me. Um, we'll see. If it happens again, then we got something else going on. But we did, ran a bunch of labs to try and determine what might be causing them, and nothing came up as an obvious indicator of something I should change in my diet or add to my regimen to prevent them in the future. So hopefully they were just related to that medication that I'm no longer on, and it'll be the end of that experience because it was awful. <laughs> and I just, I don't have time in my life to be down like that for that long. Um, I try and be very cognizant of my energy levels and my health levels because of my autoimmune. Um, a lot of my flare-ups are re related to stress and cortisol. So if I'm not careful about um, when I push myself and when I rest, then I will have flares that make it much harder for me to recover. I am currently kind of in flare up from traveling and from all this, I'm trying to get that back under control. Um, but when I am flared, my main symptom is extreme fatigue. So <laughs> that doesn't help either. And then you add on top of it being ADHD, right? bouncing back and setting up new routine routines and getting back into the swing of things is incredibly difficult. Um, for me in particular, I'm trying to move my thing up here. My camera's not quite in the right position. There we go. For me in particular, I, um, I'm losing my train of thought like crazy and I did take my medication, but Ooh, again, brain fog is another thing that happens when I'm flaring. But uh, because of my ADHD, um, I have a really hard time. My main executive function deficit is in task initiation. And that hits in all areas of my life. Um, once I'm started on something, I'm good to go. But getting started is really difficult. I just get stuck. And when I, you know, I'm down for my health for a couple of months, um, you know, my routine was get up, get my kids out the door for school and then get back in bed. Um, whether I was sleeping or, you know, watching trials or, hi, Brittany, so happy to see you. Thanks for hopping in. I'm glad YouTube is showing at least a few people that I'm here. <laughs> it's been a minute. Um but that, that routine of getting my kids out the door and getting back in bed, 
I am not a morning person. I've never been a morning person. I really, you know, we've talked before about ADHD and um, issues with sleep. That is definitely also let me know if my like mic volumes are okay and stuff like I haven't necessarily checked any of that. My setup was, yeah, I had to re-put things up. So if you can hear me, if you can't hear me, if I need to change something, put it in the chat. Um, oh, the ADHD is hitting today. What was I saying? Um, mornings. So I definitely am someone who has issues with sleep. I have insomnia. I do take medication for that. Um, I also have a delayed sleep phase syndrome. So even when I am able to fall asleep, my body really wants to sleep from about 1 30 till about 10, 10 30. Um, that is just not the way this world operates. And maybe in the future when I don't have kids at home, then I can operate myself more, probably not till 10, but closer to my natural sleep rhythms. But I also someone who kind of requires a lot more sleep because of my autoimmune stuff, particularly when I'm flared. So getting going in the morning has really been a struggle. And for my work, <laughs> I need to be uh, working during business hours. I can do a lot of things in the evenings and I do frequently, but I can't make phone calls to schedule appointments at nine o'clock at night. And for some reason, with my task initiation difficulties, making phone calls is like the hardest thing that I have to do. Once I get started, once I'm making my way down the voicemail list, like I'm good. I get into a rhythm. It goes fine. But getting myself to start making those calls is really difficult. Um, other things I really struggle with are things like scheduling a live because I feel like I need, I'm new to this, right? I'm new to the YouTube thing. I feel like sometimes I get in my head a little bit perfectionist and definitely imposter syndrome about it, right? Like, what do I have to say? Who's going to want to listen? And if I'm going to go, I better be super prepared. I need to have something really good to talk about. And then, you know, we get on here and we get chatting and I absolutely love it. I love doing live streams because um, I don't have time to overthink it um, as long as I put it on my calendar and I promise people I will show up. I'm going to do it. So that's what I did this week. I am not really prepared to be in my office. I won't show you over here because, again, I was in the middle of decluttering projects when I went down for two months. And I have three boys. Um, I did have cleaning help. Unfortunately, my, I love the person who helps me clean my house. She is also a dear friend that I've known for a very long time. But unfortunately, now she's having some health issues and um, is unable to help me. And I haven't found someone else and actually need to take a pause from it right now for yeah, personal stuff. Um, but you know, when you have medical issues, then you have to pay for medical issues. Unfortunately, uh, side tangent, my, one of the main reasons why I'm working on doing this channel and content creation in general is to help fund stuff for my kids right now. The biggest thing we need funding for is my son's marching band. Um, it has been the absolute best thing in the world for him. Um, like I can't, I can not even <laughs> describe the changes in my son and his focus in how he does in school and how he's doing socially that have come from the decision for him to do marching band that he did not want to do. And we all thought would be a really good thing for him. Um, and so his grandma bribed him big time. He made a big ask and said, sure, I'll do it. If you get me this thing that was not a small, <laughs> he thought there's no way on earth it's going to happen. Um, and she said, okay, and hopped online and ordered it. <laughs> so then he was committed and he absolutely loves it. It has been 
probably the hardest thing he's ever done. And I know he would, he would definitely say that. Um, but he even himself has said recently that learning how to work really, really hard at something um, and see the payoff of the end result has been the biggest thing that he has gained from marching band. And yes, Mama Bear just started sobbing because I've seen that in him. It, it, he stopped fighting doing schoolwork. He stopped fighting, doing homework. Now he still struggles as a kid with ADHD to stay organized with his schoolwork and um, develop study schools and skills. And there's things that he's still struggling with, but man, I don't have to fight with him about homework anymore. And the battles long drawn out battles we used to have. And it wasn't like we're fighting, but me just saying, Hey, you have to get this done. Here's the list of missing assignments and you're not playing video games until they're done. And the emotional meltdowns that we would have over it. Um, we are currently in that same mode with my, <laughs> uh, second child who's in his first year of middle school. And that was the year that we had the most trouble with my oldest. So there's hope that he will get there as well. Um, but marching band is not cheap. And our band program at our high school is phenomenal. They have 254 kids signed up between marching band and color guard for this year. That's an increase of 30 over last year. And last year was an increase of 30 over 35 over the year before. So since he started marching band, the band has grown from 190 to 254. Phenomenal. The director is just incredible. He's an incredible person. He is really invested in the kids and he holds them to a high standard and they are good. And this week his not the marching band, but his symphonic band is traveling. We live in Utah. They're traveling to Washington, DC to do some clinics and performances at two universities there. Um, and then go see some sites and they're going to go to a symphony, um, at, why can't I think of it? The Kennedy Center, which is amazing. And then are going to go to the Holocaust Memorial and the Smithsonian. And I'm so excited that he has the opportunity. And man, I was going to go. <laughs> I don't usually go as a chaperone um, because they need males to chaperone boys and females to chaperone the girls. And I have sons. Um, my husband and I don't both go because... We have younger kids who are involved in things and the cost gets up there. When we go for marching band competitions, we don't take my youngest because um, there's no way he will sit there. They will come and watch a performance and then leave. But I am, I'm, <laughs> I like to get involved in what my kids are doing. I like to be there. I don't like to miss anything. I just want to watch them do the things that make them happy. And I like to get involved while I'm there because it keeps me busy and it becomes my social network. So I'm fairly involved in the marching band, um, in the volunteers. I just kind of get my hands and everything, but I don't usually chaperone because I like to have my space <laughs> I don't have to be it with all of the kids all the time. But also I, this is the first time that we are sending any of our kids on a trip like this. Um, without me being there. And I get a little worried. Um, a year ago, I would have not felt like my son was in a place where I could do that. I've always gone, he, you know, all my kids struggle with mental health things. Um, and I just liked to be close by in case they need me. Um, they all have anxiety along with their, um, neurodevelopmental conditions. And sometimes that can be pretty significant. Um, and socially, they sometimes struggle and I need to kind of pull them aside and help them navigate some things. I just, I like to be present in case they need me. Well, my plane ticket money went to <laughs> uh, surgery to remove a kidney stone this year. And with tax season among us and some weird... I won't go into the story because it's boring to anyone else, but, um, the short version is 
nationally, people who work in medical uh, and mental health have had a problem with billing because there was a ransomware hack in um, a system that 90% of people who bill for medical things use to do their billing. Um, so it made it so that we could not submit things for insurance. We're a very small clinic, so that there's been a huge delay in payments. Anyway, again, that's the short version, which is just, you know, adding to the fact that I'm not going to DC tomorrow with my son and I'm a little bummed. I've never been to DC. I wanted to go for that reason too, but I am also a little worried. <laughs> and I just told him if anything happens, I'll be on a flight. I'll make it happen. I'll be there. Um, I think he'll be okay. Again, like I said, a year ago, I wouldn't have done it. Two years ago, not a chance. Um, two years ago, he went on a trip just a few hours away with his band to perform. And I was there and he did a lot better than I thought he would that time, but he did need me. Um, but he has traveled with this band. He's got good friends he's going with. Um, chaperones that I know and we'll be in touch. And if I feel like anything's off, I'll find a way to hop on a last minute flight. But yeah, not going to DC because stupid kidney stone. It's just and I started that story meaning to say something else, but then ADHD took over. So um, we're going to just do one of these. Do, 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 do. Because, yeah. D, Marching Bad did wonders for my oldest. Um, oh, thanks, Brittany, for letting me know the levels are okay. Um. It has been, I mean, band in general, like we have amazing band programs at the middle school and the high school and the middle school teachers go and do an elementary level band, which my kids didn't participate in. Um, it wasn't available during COVID years for one of my sons, but then my kids play instruments that want to do instruments that they weren't doing in elementary band. And anyway, and they were both heavily involved in competitive baseball and couldn't do it at the time. So we didn't start them until seventh grade. But, oh, I cry. I cry every time I talk to the band directors because I'm so grateful for what they gave to my my oldest in particular. My middle son is in it now and band is the safe place. Like, and we'll talk about him in a minute, but. My oldest has always struggled socially and feeling like he has a place where he fits in the world. Um, he is highly neurodivergent, very, very smart, gifted, but just we have we're always still questioning whether there's some spectrum there, but we have not. He's just like it could, I don't know. He struggles socially. He doesn't read the room well. He says things impulsively and that are just a little bit cringy. He just has had a hard time keeping friends. And when he was younger in particular, when he was not necessarily stable on medications and everything. He could be, a, he's a lot. He was a lot. I'm a lot. We know these ADHD kids are a lot, right? And so socially they could tend to struggle. They overwhelm people. They um, don't necessarily understand or I don't know. It's not necessarily understand, but they don't often see boundaries, overshares. I mean, I am the queen of the oversharing. I struggle sometimes with this channel because of that, try to figure out what where to set my boundaries because I want to be 
open and honest. And he's the same way. He feels like he's hiding things if he doesn't say the whole truth. And that sometimes is like, that's not something we say out loud. <laughs> um, when he got into band, and our, like I said, our middle school has three grades. They have three levels of band, two levels of jazz band. The high school has three levels of band, two levels of jazz band, and a marching band that is second in the state and we'll see because they're going to national championships this year. We'll see how they rank up um, nationally, but we expect they're probably in the top 15 or 20 marching bands in the country. They're really good and it has given them a place to shine. And even if they're not really good, something about band, they work so hard and it's a bunch of quirky kids, right? Like they are the best kids in the world, but <laughs> I just call them my little weirdos. I love band kids. Gosh, they're the best. But the directors also are teaching them how to be amazing humans. So in the fall, we had our high school um, is enormous. The area that we live in is growing rapidly. I mean, houses going up like crazy. I can't even, I can't even. The high school in grades 10 through 12 has 3000 students. Uh, four years ago, they had 3,600. The year after that, a new high school was opened in the area and they split off. And now both of those high schools are up to 3000 students. Again, we need a new high school, but I mean, it's enormous, right? So this was the first time that these two high schools, um, the other high school is kind of growing and growing and they're now in the same like division for sports. They weren't until this past year. So it was the first time these two high schools were going to be playing each other. Big rivalry, right? Like we actually live in the boundaries for the other high school. We go out of area to this high school. Um, that's a story for another day, but all of our neighbors go to this other high school, right? Like we live very close to the boundary, but all these kids know each other. Huge rivalry game. Two really not great football teams. <laughs> Let's just say. Um, it was like Battle of the Titans. But the Titans of like I don't know. I don't any, I can't even come up with a good description for it. Not good football teams, both on the same level. <laughs> so it was a tight game, but oh my gosh, sometimes it's painful. Our um, the football team is getting better, and I don't want to like. It's just we're newer areas, newer schools. The kids who have a lot of talent transfer to other schools because we don't have a long football program. You know our. A city I live in has only been incorporated for like 25 years. <laughs> so it's brand new high school there. Even the high school, the bigger high school that's been around longer has only been around for 10 to 15 years. Oh, hey, Lifestyle by Kay. Thanks so much for coming. We're just kind of, I'm just rambling today. Hopefully we'll get to an ADHD topic soon. Right now we're talking about marching band. <laughs> but after the game, the stadium was a disaster like also a lifestyle okay if you have a question this goes for everybody of course but if you have a question something you want to talk about put it in the comments and i'll put it on my list and we can talk about that thing so if there's something in particular you have questions about um you're always welcome to put it in the comments i keep a notebook right here of topics and questions and we can talk about them short and then i can um, dive into them a little bit more or pull some things up so we're a small community of ADHDers, and discussion is always open. Um, I want to go where you want to go, and sometimes I go where ADHD leaves, uh, leads us, and that can be um, frightening sometimes. So <laughs> feel free to rein me in if you have a question. I'll turn on that light. Oh, hopefully that's too bright. Let me turn it down a little bit. Okay, so we've got some cloudiness happening outside, and... Um, so my light's going to be coming in and out, but that's too bright. Anyway, so we had this like football game that was hysterical. 
because the teams were so pathetic. <laughs> but afterwards, the stadium was a mess. And I have pictures of it. I don't like, think I can pull them up right now to show you. But you had the student section, the parent section, just trash everywhere, food everywhere in the bleachers and all around the stadium. They have food trucks come to the football games, again, small community. So um, these smaller businesses come. Um, uh, it was disgusting. Then you have this section of the marching band of 220 kids and it is pristinely clean. And I just love those kids so much. Um, but the next day they had their first cleaning camp, um, prior to, uh, um, they had their first cleaning camp getting ready for competition. So they had, you know, they had the football game. They got home at 11, 1130 at night, had to be back on the field by 8 AM for an eight hour cleaning camp. And at the end of the camp, they, 200 kids picked up trash bags and cleaned the stadium. The director was like, Hey, don't, what do you think? Should we clean this place up? And the kids were like, of course. And it took them 10, 15 minutes. Those kids didn't make that mess, right? They, their area of the bleachers was spotless. They cleaned up. 200 bags of trash from the stadium and um they didn't brag about it they didn't post it someone from the community uh i think a parent went to pick up their kids and saw and had seen what it had what it had looked like the night before um and posted it on a community facebook page that you know these marching band kids didn't make this mess but they are the best of my <laughs> they cleaned it up and i am just like so grateful for these directors who yeah they are about winning competitions and they do they take second place all the time because there's this one band that has taken first place in everything for like 30 years which is before our city even existed but we did beat them in a couple of categories over the last couple of years and we're coming for them <laughs> but anyway <laughs> they teach them how to be good humans um you know not all these kids are going to go on to do music things most of them could get music scholarships of some sort if they want. You don't have to be a music major to get a scholarship in music. They give people scholarships to play in their ensembles and their bands. It's a great way to get scholarships. If you've got kids, get them involved in band. <laughs> but I'm just really grateful for good people who do good things for kids who don't fit in to other spaces all the time. And, you know, this is a big enough school and a big enough band that a lot of the kids are like, they're kids who could fit in other spaces, right? They're not just the weirdo kids. It's a big band program. It's not like it's the nerdy thing. To, in my high school, we had like 12 kids in band and it was like, Ooh, the band kids, you know? And there's definitely that like band geek persona when you're looking at kind of high school tropes right but <clears throat> that's not necessarily the way it is at this high school because the band is so big and so good and the music programs are massive um and well supported by the community and the administration so um but everyone's welcome there our band director has requirements for being in the band, but they're very minimal um, because he doesn't want to turn anyone away. He feels like anybody who wants to have the band experience gets to be there. So we have 254 kids. And when they stretch across that football field, it is astonishing. Um, but yeah, let's stop talking. I've been rambling now for 40 minutes. And who even knows what we've talked about? And thank you for being <laughs> Yes, this is one of EDB's lip glosses, and it's fantastic. I love it. All right, let's put this question up. I'm just curious on how ADHD differs from person to person. You can really see when Runkle, EDB, and Rob are together on a stream. Yes. Um, <laughs> 
it is very different person to person and there are definitely common threads obviously that allow that make way for a diagnosis um but it does then there are certain things that like you know when they say something or i say something um in a group it's like oh yeah i do that too right but um it's also highly dependent on like how it's managed. So that's kind of really what this channel, my intention for this channel and the next topic that I want to talk about is what we're going to do here. Um, I am going to put up some polls because I want to see what's going to be the most helpful for people. But I do want to start doing um, interviews. My intention for that was for that to be um, a podcast separately. And I may just start recording them. And then when I feel like I'm in a place where I can launch a podcast, um, launch those recordings again in a podcast format. Um, but I would like to tell ADHD stories, right? What I interview people with ADHD in all areas of life and have them just tell their story, how, what ADHD looked like for them growing up, their process of diagnosis was it when they were a child or an adult what things have helped them um overcome what stumbling blocks have they had as a result and just tell those ADHD stories um for this purpose so that we can see the differences but also the commonalities right the things that um it's really really powerful and really really helpful and and we've seen that in um those of you who've come from Emily or Rob or Runkle's chats um, when they talk about ADHD or people who comment, you know, because of something you said, I understand myself better. And that really is where I want to go with this because I was a late diagnosis. Um, if you go and watch one of my first videos, uh, maybe, maybe the only one up that's not a live stream. Um, I tell a little bit more about my story about how I came to my diagnosis after three of my kids were diagnosed um, and what that process was like for me. But now looking back, and I'm still doing that quite a bit of hearing and learning more about ADHD, learning more about my ADHD and how it was present through all of those times in my life, um, situations with friends, things with, um, you know, struggling socially, struggling in school, even though I was really smart, um, not necessarily living up to my potential in all areas, because if it was a subject I didn't care about, I didn't do the homework. And, um, <laughs> trying to, help my kids through that process now so that they don't make the same mistakes that I did, but also giving them the space um, to be themselves and to learn from those mistakes on their own. It's tricky. And I say that now as I am trying to determine how to help my seventh grader who is really struggling to do work and homework in things that are uninteresting um, and hasn't quite learned how to work. Man, it's a struggle. So yeah, I am working on figuring out how that's going to work and hopefully lining up some interviews. There's also for, it's been a little while because both of us had some health things and some family things that got in the way, but I have a good friend um, who is also an executive function coach and a special ed advocate. Um, and now she also previously was a clinical psychologist. She gave up her license to do more coaching things because she felt like it gave her more freedom to work with these particular families. Um, and she's phenomenal. And she and I used to do a weekly room in clubhouse starting back in 2020 when during the pandemic when clubhouse was a big thing and then we moved it to instagram live for a little bit and then both of our lives got crazy and we haven't gotten back to it but i would like to set up a weekly live with her again um, in the process of figuring that out uh she's just fantastic her name is susan blumberg um She's a great coach. We 
play off each other we really well. We have similar knowledge bases, but different experience that we come at things with. And um, I really miss having those conversations with her. So I'm going to try and add that in. Um, and then I would like to do more pre-recorded stuff, but I'm having, those are, I'm having a hard time figuring that out. Um, my imposter syndrome comes in and my perfectionist and I, so I think right now I'm going to stick with hopefully a live like this once a week. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about two different ones. One where it's just kind of this, like a random tangent stream where we just talk about whatever, whatever pops up in the chat or whatever I find during the week that may or may not be related to like education about ADHD, but things that like, I'm just interested in at the moment. So it will be more of like following the ADHD down the rabbit hole sort of stream um, where we just hang out and kind of talk about different things like what I'm obsessed with on TikTok right now, or, um, you know, a book I'm reading or things like that. And hopefully a little bit more or today. I just, I needed to just jump in with both feet today and just get on get it on the schedule. Um, and not try and over plan it just cause I was having, again, having a hard time getting started. So that's what today was. And we'll go until you guys are sick of listening to me or until I have to pick up a kid from school. <laughs> um, and then I would like to also, I'm working on gathering more um, research. So I guess question for you guys that are here. Um, I'm trying to decide if I do a pre do research as a pre-recorded to go through, or if I do it as a live stream, I like the live because I like people to be able to ask questions. Um, and for some reason it's easier for me to just get on a live and start talking than to try and pre-record things. And maybe I just need to start recording as if I'm just talking on live, but I don't know. It just feels like it needs to be more formal and that's just me getting it in my own head, I think. But, um, I've got some new research journals that we are getting for our clinic and I want to kind of do maybe a weekly, you know, what's new in ADHD. Um, in the future, when I get to where we're monetized, or maybe I'll look into doing a Patreon, I just don't want to spread myself too thin with the other things I have going on. So I'm going to start in one place. Ideally, we'll just get monetized here and start doing the memberships. Um, we did cross the 200 subscriber barrier, which is awesome. Um, the, that was a step up goal. The first big goal is um, 500. So if you know anyone you can share the stream with or share this page with, please do. Um, but anyway, research. I'd like to do just kind of a what's new in ADHD research. Um, and that can kind of, I feel like, move into other kind of related categories of autism. Um, there's, just, there's a lot more research coming out now. Thankfully, they're researching more than just boys under the age of 12 now. So <laughs> it's great. Um, so yeah, the, the main source that I had for that, that was just a really good little journal. Um, I guess it was more like a newsletter. It wasn't a, necessarily a journal, but he would kind of gather up the most recent research and send it out monthly. Um, unfortunately that publication is no longer going because Russell Barkley, who was doing it is, um, you know, on his way to retirement, he's still writing and still doing some things, but I think he just was taking a step back from a few things cause he's older, but oh, how I love Russell Barkley. I've got like four of his books in this room right now. Um, but for membership stuff, I want to do a book club. And I'm thinking about kind of alternating between reading like ADHD books and then just reading good books. I would like to do some obviously members only live streams where we can talk about other or I can get a little bit more personal uh, about things that I don't necessarily want to share totally publicly. And I'm hoping that we can get um, I'm calling him Dr. ADHD All right now. Um, my husband is a licensed psychologist who specializes in neurodevelopment. 
um, assessment and treatment. And I'd like to do some members only uh, Q and A's with him if I can get him on. <laughs> we'll see. He social media is not his thing, but he's an excellent presenter and teacher and just yeah, an incredible expert in this area. So those are some things I have planned. Um, I also, I want to do more short videos. Number one, because that's a good way to reach people. Um, trying to figure out if I delve into the world of TikTok with that. I mean, you can film one and post it in multiple places, but, or if I just keep focusing on my Instagram. Right now I'm Instagram at Nicole Miles Coaching. I may change that handle. I can't, haven't decided because I'm not doing a lot of coaching right now. Um, anywho, that's another squirrel moment. So that's kind of my plan for the channel right now. I, I still really like doing the body doubling streams, the structured body doubling streams, but I am working on figuring out a way to make that happen. Um, I feel like those would be incredibly helpful, but I don't know how much the algorithm loves them. So I'm, that may be something I put into members, um, as a perk for membership, but again, haven't quite figured that out. I am hoping I'm also trying to figure out music for it because I can't obviously play just like my playlists. Um, I have some royalty free music and I can get more, but I, I want to start kind of delving into different types of music and sound that are known to help people with ADHD. So I'm working on figuring that out, um, creating some royalty free, like brown noise tracks that we can play for body doubling. Um, I also have a 12 year old who is just a musical genius. Music, his brain runs on music, always has since he was very small. And now he He's played the cello since he was five. Um, he has done some composing. He is has taught himself how to play the guitar a little bit. Now for in band, he is doing the oboe and for jazz band, the saxophone. And then next year, he's also going to do percussion. So next year, out of eight classes, he four of them will be music. Well, I guess nine classes. Jazz band is before school. But yeah, he's going to be doing advanced orchestra, intermediate band, beginning percussion, and jazz band. Lo-fi girl. All right, that. Down. But he, anyway, he has been recently getting into um, writing more music. And I've been telling him that if he creates some things that I can use on my channel, that I will buy them from him. Right now, it's a lot of exploration and not a lot of organization And um, as he's more exploring. But he's getting better. And lo-fi. This pen is not working. Come on. It's so cute. Look at my cute little pen. Focus. Come on. Do the like influencer thing. There it is. It's a little llama. I got these pens for my kids uh, stockings this year and they're erasable and they're really cute. Yeah, so I want to kind of play around with the music thing um, and figure that out for the body doubling stream. So that's kind of where I am on things. If you have comment um, what you'd like to see, do, are you wanting the body doubling streams? Are they meh for you? Um, is there anything else you'd like me to cover topics you have questions about are always welcome. You can post them in the comments or just head over to the community page. I usually have some posts there that you can comment on. Um, or you can find me on Instagram 
um, at Nicole Miles Coaching or on Twitter at Nicole has ADHD, but Twitter I am trying to step back from because that place is a cesspool. I'm also on Discord a little bit. I don't have my own Discord, but if you are in um, some of the others, you can maybe find me there. But commenting here, I do see because the community is small enough that I see all the comments at this point. So <laughs> any questions you have? Um, what else should we talk about today? Let's see. It's been kind of a random one. Mm hmm. I had some articles. Let's see if I can find them. They, I believe our bookmarked might be on another. Let's see. Mm, that's not it. That's not it. Well, let me see if I can find. I know I have some on my phone, so I'll send some of those over, and we can do a quick article read from something that I saw recently and saved to talk about, and then I'll wrap things up because I do have to make those dreaded phone calls today. I'm behind on cat on voicemails and oh where did it go uh, okay so here's the question for you how many tabs do you currently have open on your phone see if you can beat me Comment in the chat how many tabs you currently have open on your phone. I guarantee I have more. <laughs> oh, what did I do with these? Let's find it. Here we go. Mm -hmm. This one looks like a decent one. Short, but helpful. We'll pull this one up. All right. How many tabs do you have? Over 300. I've been there before. I'm at 190 right now, so I beat you. <laughs> oh, it is just a thing, isn't it? Now, where did it just open up that article? Yes, dang it. Open. There it is. Okay. I'm going to share this tab here. Oh, nope, that's not what I want to do. Present. Oh, I got to remember how to do this. Share screen. That one. All right. And add to stage. There we go. Okay. This is an article from psychologytoday.com. It's a good one that I found recently, although it was written a few years ago. I don't know Russell Ramsey, Russell Ramsey, PhD, ABPP. Um, what adult ADHD feels like? Subtitle, believe it or not, it can feel like food poisoning. <laughs> All right. I'm a clinical psychologist by trade, specializing in adult ADHD. In this role, I've heard clients' accounts of wide-ranging difficulties and frustrations in the pursuit of various goals and managing other affairs, all of which seem to take more time and energy to manage than they should, accompanied by good amounts of stress due to the effects of ADHD. <coughs> Excuse me. 
adult ADHD and feeling misunderstood. And this is where I feel like a community like this is so important. An unfortunate source of stress that comes with ADHD is feeling misunderstood and even judged by those in one's inner circle of friends and family. Attempts to explain but not make excuses for why and how a matter was forgotten, mismanaged, put off until way too late, or any other of the usual suspects of ADHD snafus are met with rejoinders that I don't want to hear excuses, stop using ADHD as your crutch, or even questioning the validity of the syndrome. Oh, that one. Oh, when I see the whole ADHD is not real or adult ADHD is not real, or everyone has a little ADHD. Rage. Flames. The side of my face. Oh. These messages may also be voiced in other relationships, including by professionals sought out for help. Um, I know that's not so that's something that's been fairly common for women. I think it's getting better now, but for women especially, um, having their symptoms minimized by professionals because it doesn't look the same as um, what they would expect. Uh, doctors who don't know that much about ADHD, general practitioners. Um, a lot of women have been dismissed. A lot of adults have been dismissed by professionals. Um, and just like if you have a health concern and you go to a doctor and you explain your symptoms and they tell you you don't have anything, right? It can be so defeating. Um, having something that affects your life as much as ADHD does, finally realizing what might be going on and seeking help, actually making the appointment and showing up to it and wanting to seek that help and then being shut down um, can be extremely defeating. So if this happened to you, I apologize, and you're not the only one. Although many adults with ADHD and their advocates probably are better able to give voice to their experiences than I am, an analogy that has resonated when I have used it with clients is that of food poisoning. Although certainly not conjuring pleasant images, it seems to capture the struggles of living with ADHD that non-ADHD adults take for granted. What do food poisoning and ADHD have in common? Food poisoning occurs when someone eats a food that they expect to enjoy, but it is somehow tainted or improperly prepared to the degree that it is toxic. The body's self-protection mechanism kicks in and unleashes a sequence of reactions meant to both inhibit the desire to take any more bites and the expulsion of whatever has been ingested. This includes nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, fever and sweats, diarrhea, you get the picture. Lunch, anyone? Later, when presented with the same or similar food item with assurances that it is safe and untainted, the body will instinctively switch into self-protection mode. A sort of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, cautionary mode, with a welling up of nausea merely from the sight and smell of the food before the first nibble. ADHD has the same effect on many activities of adult life. <clears throat> Excuse me. The seemingly small hassles that most people handle with apparent ease, arriving early for a meeting, handling a boring wait in a waiting room, relatively brief and easy household chores, following through on plans, becoming bigger and more stressful than they need to be for adults with ADHD. And larger undertakings, such as written assignments and work reports or house repair projects that require diligence over time and other large projects for which there is no way to do them in one sitting, although many clients have assured me that, in fact, they have completed such projects via all-nighters or other Herculean efforts on the wave of a deadline pressure, very often end up in delays, failures, or disappointments magnified by the knowledge that any product delivered in these circumstances does not match one's potential. Um... The procrastination. <laughs> this is kind of part of the problem that I have with a lot of my work tasks, right? There are the things that like have to be done. There's deadlines for certain things. There's things that need to be done within a reasonable amount of time. And then there's just projects that I would like to do or that that would be great if. And those 
don't get done because they're not urgent, right? They don't have that sense of like, this has to be done right now. It can be done anytime. Those things that can be done anytime are the ones that don't get done. I am the queen of hammering out a 15 page paper the night before it's due. <laughs> um, I didn't, I tried writing like rough drafts and outlines and things like that ahead of time to get, or, and it just, they were terrible. I write my best at the last minute when the thing is due in two hours. That is when my brain switches on and amazing things come out of my mouth or fingers onto paper. <laughs> it worked for me. I got through a master's degree that way. My master's thesis did take me two years when I intended to get it done in one because the deadlines were loose. Um, and I could have very well have let that just go and not finish. Um, cause I wasn't even teaching anymore at the time I was home with a baby. I'm very, very proud of myself for finishing that task and that goal. Um, even though it took me a year longer than I wanted it to, but man, I need those deadlines. And of course that was 20 years before I knew I had ADHD. As insidiously ADHD interferes with the pursuit of hobbies and enjoyable undertakings, a backlog of undone work makes it feel irresponsible to do something enjoyable or the anticipated hassles such as gathering art supplies or getting out for a bike ride create barriers to self-care. Um, yeah, the backlog of undone work. I have carried a lot of guilt and shame for a very long time because there's so many things that I should be doing with my time that I can't make myself do. Laundry was a big one. Uh, in the last few years, I have been fortunate enough and to find a laundry service in my area. And the amount of... How do I put this? The, the weight... And the amount of guilt and shame that was lifted off my shoulders when I started using a laundry service was palpable. Um, it's something I, and it doesn't solve all things. Like I still have laundry baskets of random stuff that didn't get put away or things that we don't send it to the laundry service, like towels and sheets and things. Cause they take up too much room in the bag. I can do like one set of sheets or I can do like an entire load of my kid's laundry. Um, but so I'll throw the sheets or towels in the washer, forget about them, have to wash them like three times, finally get them in the dryer, forget to fold them. My husband will do a load of his laundry because he doesn't like to send his out, which is fine. He can do his own laundry and I'll send everyone else's out. Um, and he'll stick it in a laundry basket and it will sit there for who knows how long. And then anytime I'm doing something that is just for pleasure. I feel like, oh, I really should be cleaning the kitchen. I really should be doing this. And even though I know and I preach to everyone to stop shooting all over yourself, it is a pattern, a thought pattern that has been in there for 40 years now of the things I should be doing that I can't get myself to do and the time wasters that I'm doing instead. Um. Huge problem. I feel like an especially huge problem for women. Um, for some reason, it, it maybe it's because there's you know certain tasks there. There's more tasks that are traditionally assigned to women um, that have this sort of expectation, right? Things like housework, laundry, meal planning, especially if you're a stay-at-home mom, like I've been for uh, fifteen years. Um, you know, we divided the tasks that my husband was working insane hours. Those were the tasks that I, we determined. And now we split things more because we're both working. Um, and the kids do more, but for a very long time, like I was doing the kids and the house and he was doing work. And that's how we divided the labor in the household. It was fairly traditional and not saying that it has to be that way, but typically, Oh, 
Oh, sorry, John was getting into stuff. Um, but women, I think, feel this pressure typically more than men do. And we are internalizers where we sit and stew and guilt and shame ourselves a lot. These frustrations stem from the same... Sorry, I'm back here. I'm right here if you want to read along or I'll just keep reading. These frustrations stem from the same discounting of delayed payoffs that affect all the have-to duties in adult life. In both cases, eroding one's well-being and sense of self. Those tasks don't give dopamine and they're never done. And so we don't do them. Even well-intentioned exhortations to enjoy learning and take classes on topic one finds interesting is for many adults akin to being offered assurances that this slice of mushroom pizza will not result in stomach cramping, projectile vomiting from the last slice they had. Trust me, the visceral response is to avoid and delay rather than jump right in, with avoidance being one of the main, if not the central struggle of adult ADHD, though it makes sense in terms of past setbacks. Hope and understanding for adult ADHD. Living with and managing adult ADHD is tiring, and it is no surprise that outcome studies have indicated that reports of fatigue are common with diagnosis in adulthood. The encouraging fact is that there are many effective treatments and supports for adults with ADHD. Medications help address the core symptoms, and psychosocial treatments promote the implementation of effective coping strategies. Most adults with ADHD are simply looking for a reasonable sense of cause and effect, an expectation that the extra efforts required to manage ADHD will produce reasonable outcomes. So if a loved one of yours has adult ADHD and is struggling, don't force feed obvious suggestions. Instead, try listening for understanding and with empathy. So brief little article. Um, I will put the link in the description if you want to look at it later or send it to someone who is trying to help understand. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. And save. Okay, link should be in description now. So um, I'm going to wrap up for today because I do need to do some work before I go pick up my kids. And now that I'm sitting down here at my desk and I have done this, that should give me the behavioral momentum to make all the phone calls. So I'm going to make all the phone calls. I do feel so much better when I'm caught up on all the voicemails. Those, they are one thing that just hang over my head where, uh, I need to make those calls. I really should make those calls. Um, but for some reason, starting making those calls is so difficult for me, but I'm gonna go make those calls. So thank you for hanging out today. Those of you on replay crew, thank you so much for being here. Um, if you know anybody who might like to be part of this community please share let's grow a little bit see if we can't get to that 500 mark so that i can start opening up some membership things Chef, what are you chewing at? Ah. i need to go get this naughty dog something to chew on so i'm gonna roll the outro and yeah leave questions comments um if you have anything you'd like me to cover oh jen edwards late we is not a thing here. Time is a construct and replay crew is great. Happy to see you. Thank you for being here. I'm going to run the outro and we will see you guys again soon. I promise. I'm going to get, I'm going to get this routine dialed in. Um, but I am excited about some of the, um, some of the things I have on the table. So thanks for being here and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. 
This video is not a substitute for counseling, psychotherapy, medical, or mental health care. The information and advice shared here should not be used in place of any form of diagnosis, treatment, or therapy. Information provided here does not involve diagnosis or treatment of medical or mental or psychological disorders. If you feel the need for professional support, please seek a local professional in your area. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only.